Well, for the first time, in my opinion, we've been invited to start talking about the collaboration between uh, the Republic of Zambia and that of the UNWTO. Uh, I must just put into context that Zambia joined the UNWTO in 1975, which is a long time ago, probably before some of us were even born. And we've, for the very long time, we've actually been seeing a uh, growing interest between, obviously, uh, the Republic of Zambia and that of the organization, which is the UNWTO. Now, in terms of collaboration, we all know that uh, the Minister of Tourism, especially for my country, is a, is, is a ministry that looks after, one, marketing the destination, which is Zambia, and obviously the iconic feature that we have in Zambia is that of the Musiotunya, the mighty Victoria Falls, you may have heard of it, one of the seven natural wonders of the world. And then also to look at how best we could safeguard our wildlife, which is, that's why we always say Zambia is predominantly uh, a, a country which is boss of waterfalls as well as wildlife. So now in terms, to answer your questions, the collaboration that has gone on over a period of time from 1975 between us and the UNWTO has obviously been looking at, first of all, technical support. Technical support in how to build stronger and better relations and how we're going to have a, a robust uh, destination such as Zambia. And then more so, we have seen opportunities that um, the UNWTO has assisted for us to actually market the destination. So the two strong approach that we're looking at in terms of technical support is where we are having an association such as the UNWTO putting its skin in the game, putting its, uh, ideas within uh, a specific member country such as Zambia to see how best we could now grow in tandem with other member states so that we are able to now market tourism. We do realize that tourism, like many other uh, sectors, I'll probably talk about agriculture, I'll talk about mining, I'll talk about energy, manufacturing, uh, economic sectors of, of each particular country, Zambia to be specific. But what is important now, over a period of time, in the, late two, in the early 2000s, in Zambia, tourism became an economic sector. So the shift from, economy, from a social sector to the economic sector was a little bit uh, not too fast, if I can put it so, uh, if I can say so myself, it needed to be a little bit gradual. But suddenly, all those things have now moved. Now, we needed the assistance of the likes of the UNWTO to actually bolster our positioning and how we're going to push the tourism sector. Well, one of the initiatives that obviously the Republic of Zambia uh, set into motion was that of creating what we call the Zambia Tourism Master Plan. I'll call, I'll call it the holy grail of tourism in Zambia. Now, the reason why we set up the Zambia Tourism Master Plan, which is a 20-year plan from 2018 to 2030, uh, 2038, was to actually identify specific areas that were going to focus as a way of growing the tourism sector. Now, this is purely uh, based on based, both nature and non-venture-based uh, tourism. So because of that, we presented that particular document to the UNWTO to see how best we could now foster our relations. Fortunately enough, in 2013, Zambia co-hosted the General Assembly, the, the similar one we had here, where the, obviously the, the Secretary of UNWTO found need to support some of the initiatives that were actually contained in the Zambia Tourism Master Plan over and above some of the uh, pressing needs at the time that they thought we would be able to work around. Of the, one of the key projects that comes to mind right now is that of the STEP project, which was to build a resource center, purely funded by the UNWTO. Now, already, it's, 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 it's a call to action to allow our people, the Zambians themselves, those ones in Livingstone, to be able to access that uh, resource institution which is in there. We're also talking about the villages that we're talking about, the tourism villages altogether. Again, it's another concept that we're talking about. Tourism can only grow if you're going to harness support from the communities. The reason why we want to harness communities is very simple. If you engage communities to actually look at how best you're going to sell tourism within those communities. Now, this can only be unique to Zambia, I suppose, because most of our protected areas today live in the rural communities. And those are the ones who take care of our wildlife. Over and above that, we're talking about eating healthy. We're talking about gastronomy tourism, which again is another initiative that the UNWTO is supporting Zambia. Gastronomy tourism talks about non-GMO food. The gastronomy tourism, obviously, we all know it's a fancy word for food tourism, but what is key is that because of that, we've managed to now uplift communities around our protected areas. I will mention it to you now, Zambia, Landmass spans across 752,000 square kilometers. 
of that, 33% of that is a protected area. It's either a game management area or a national park. In those areas, we have communities. Now, those are the communities that we want to uplift. And I'm happy that the UNWTO has actually identified those areas to be able to now work around and then create tourism villages. That is the only sure way you're going to actually get that particular tourist, Olivia, to go and stay longer in your destination. Whatever shape or form you want to do it, you make them stay longer, you make them understand your culture, you make them eat their food, you make them dance to your tunes, you make them play your drums. Now, that is exactly what we want to see. And for me, quite frankly, that is what tourism is all about.